and I'll put this on the YouTube and then put it on the DX for you. All right? YouTube. The YouTube. I get. I mean, it's easy. I have yet to get a TikTok account, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. All right. So as you recall, you gotta get set up. I got my. I want to make sure it's in the screen there. Got my like towels to wipe my brushes off, and my palette knife, and my knife, right? Or my brush, I'm sorry. And get my paper palette. All right, there's my paper palette. And I've got my paint all here and my gel medium. And now I've got the local color of my Hulu going on there, right? But now I want to start to add shadows and maybe a little bit of highlights. This is by no means the way that you have to do it. This is the way that I've found works well for me. All right. I have found that I get my local color down. That means the approximate color of what I want everywhere. And then once that's done and once that's dry, I go to the darkest areas. I want to create the darkest shadows. So again, we didn't get a chance to do this when we were drawing, but you did show you kind of that value scale, right? And you want to think like that, right? That darkest end of the value scale. I like to go there next and put in all the shadows, all right? So, however, I'm not a big fan of black. It's, it's, I use it a little bit for outlining, but I think it's too strong for me, right? I like, I like to kind of work with the colors that we have. So I've got some like bluish purple going on and some orange going on. So let's see. The opposite, I told you before, the opposite of any, of any color will make that color gray or the comp complement, I should say. So we got some orange there. I'm going to get my gel medium. Oh, I got my cup of water too. Ta -da. And I am going to, I'm actually maybe going to start with some brown and some blue because I'll put my gel medium down for mixing color. It's better to just put a bunch down, and then that way you don't have to worry about cleaning your brush off or your palette knife off halfway through doing in the middle of doing something to get more gel medium. And I'm gonna get my ultramarine blue, I'm gonna get a little bit of that out. And I'm going to do brown over here. Looks like I think it's burnt sienna or burnt umber. This one here. All right. Which, it depends on who you talk to. Brown, it depends on the color too, actually. But brown is kind of a, I think for our purposes, you can think of brown as a type of orange. Right? And so orange and blue are complements on the color wheel. And consequently, They'll mix to a gray color if you mix them together even. All right. And so, turn that on the music. Hi, Winnie. Ah, uh, thank you. So, I'm going to pull in some of my gel medium in the middle. It's kind of a place to mix. Pull in some of my blue. Pull in my brown there and my orange. I'm trying to mix it until I get an orangish color that's sort of gray. This looks kind of purple. All right, and then I'm going to look at my uh, persimmon here. And I haven't really picked the place where the light's going to be, but I'm going to say it's coming from over here. So then that means the shadow's just going to be in there a little bit. And interestingly, shadows tend to be not right at the edge, or the darker shadows tend not to be right at the edge, but just a little away from the edge, because there's always going to be some reflected light. I got that like crease in them, right? 
And I'm not going to paint the whole thing in. I'm just going to leave areas to suggest where the darkest, the darkest color is going to be. Up there where the stem is, right? Hello, person. All right, so then I'm going to jump to not the highlight, but the right next one step below the highlights. So if, if white is the highlight where there's like this reflected bright light coming off of it, I'm going to go one step below that, which means I got to make some orange. Remember how we make orange? Which yellow, which red makes a good orange? So you want the warm red for our acrylic paint. It's the brilliant red. All right. And the other one. Warm yellow. Warm yellow. You're right. You're right. Warm yellow. So check it out. Ready? Cool yellow. That's the lemon. Warm yellow. That's the deep or the medium. Can you see the difference? And when, when you put them together, I mean, I don't know that we'd ever think, oh, yeah, cool yellow. But then when you put them together, at least personally, I say, oh, yeah, it is a cool yellow. Now, I'm doing this really fast because I'm showing you how, the, how it's done. When I do it at home, I like fuss and fuss and fuss and fuss and then stand back and look at it for a minute and, like, scratch my head and then stand with my hands on my hips. And then I come back. And I mix a little paint, and I put a couple of marks, and then I look at it again for another minute. And, and I just sort of play around with it. I move, I move much more slowly, um, which would be terribly boring for all you. So that's why my results are not always the strongest in class. If I'm doing it at home. I've got a, got a nice podcast on. <laughs> I've got like a, or some music. I've got, you know, I'm drinking my tea. Tea. Yes, tea. I'm chasing the cat off the table. It's great. The cat's greatest distraction. I do you have a cat? Do you have a cat? Kitty. I named my cat Kitty. When Kitty was young, I was working on a big painting once, I remember. And I was working on it, and Kitty wanted attention, and leaped, leapt from the windowsill onto the back of the painting. And I'm just sitting there, like, oh, looking at something, all of a sudden, two paws come over the top, and then the whole painting falls on top of me. Because it's fun like that. All right, so I made my orange. Now I'm going to get some white out, just to kind of lighten that lighten that um, orange a bit. It's actually light compared to what I have, so I don't want to make it too light. Because I, I like that orange. Okay, so the white is like the gel medium. Please be careful not to get color in it. Because if you do, it's forever that color. It's ever forever a little bit orange, or it's forever a little bit um, yellow or green or whatever. Yeah, for, it's forever a little bit sad. That's, that's very well put. All right, so just like before, pick up a little bit of my gel medium, put it in between the two. All right, and grab a little bit of white, grab a little bit of orange, so that I'm, I'm kind of mixing the color, not in one, I, I said this before, but I'll say it again. So I'm not mixing the color in one like little pan or group. I'm mixing color right as I'm working. So as I want something that's more orange, I can pick up color from here. And if I want something that's more white, I can pick up color from here. And if I want something that's translucent, I can pull a little bit of gel medium into it. Or more loaded than I want it to be. So what are we saying? Lights over here somewhere? Give that illusion of depth. If you haven't noticed, I kind of like creating in this sort of abstract 
expressions the same, at least with the curves. And I'm really just going to sort of move around and try and, I, I want to say balance the color, but I don't mean so much even amounts as much as I mean like a nice visual weight. I want to create a place where the eye gets excited and also a place where the eye gets a chance to rest, right? So I'm going for right here, making this the exciting spot. And if I want this to be exciting I and mean, I'm putting light colors here, then I'm going to keep away from putting lighter colors down here because it's going to distract the viewer. All right, I want, to, I want to pick a spot that the viewer's eye lands on and make that interesting and then, you know, make this part more chill. All right. Now, I'm going to do just a little bit down here because this is really thin, right? And it's my opinion that you should work on developing the whole painting at the same time. Don't finish the persimmon and then and then start doing the background, right? I've got my persimmon maybe, I don't know, 50% done. I'll play around with it some more. Um, but I've got this table here like about 3% done. So I'm gonna add, now that I've got this a little further along the process, I'm gonna add something to the table and I'm just gonna go with brown because it's kind of like an orange. Well, let's see if, just for funsy, oh, no, that wouldn't work. I would need to add the purple, and I'm not going to go into that. And also, that's why I'm just going to go with brown. I want to get a blue to it. And let's just see what happens if I add a little bit of orange to it. See if that makes it more gray. I think it's actually going to lighten it up. Let's see. Oh, update your computer. I don't know about you all. I sometimes don't trust the updates. What do you mean putting on my computer there? Hmm. All right, and so I'm just going to, sorry about that. Oops. And I'm not going to be too particular because I don't really want the, I don't want the background to be distracting from the foreground here. <coughs> and since my light's coming from here, right, I'm, I'm going to just strategically plan a place about here where the light's going to hit the table. I'm not going to paint it. I'm actually going to paint the, I'm going to think negative space. You remember when we were talking about positive and negative space with drawing, right? I'm going to think about where is the negative space to that positive space of the light. And I'm just going to paint in the negative space for now. And then when I go back in and do highlights, that's when I'll add, that's when I'll add the reflection. All right, so that's layer two. As I said, if I were doing this at home, it'd be a much slower process, and I would keep going. I wouldn't stop after 10 minutes. Um, but I'm, I want you all to have like some time to paint, okay? So a good, a good measure of success for today. By the end of class today, you should be well on your way to working on your painting. You should be putting watercolor down and or acrylic, whatever you're working on, all right? Um, maybe even be thinking about what's coming next. Or if you get to a point where you've put a layer of paint down on one of your paintings and you need to let it dry and there's still 15 or 20 minutes left to class, then start getting the second painting ready. Right? And then that way you have kind of two going at the same time. Okay? All right. Have a blast. Ah, my finger is too dirty.
There's the old cursor.